Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to a cold, cold, cold uh, Monday here. Martin Luther King Day 2019 in northern Michigan. It is freezing outside. It, last I looked, I think it was like 8 below. I have no idea even what the wind chill is, but it is, it's cold. Um, so it's kind of weird to be talking fishing right now, middle of January, middle of winter, but one of my favorite sayings is, in times of peace, prepare for war. And uh, that's true. So this is the time of year where we start getting our gear around. Um, you know, luck follows preparation. That's another one of my favorite sayings. Luck follows preparation. You know, you look at uh, the best boats out there in the tournaments, you know, they're time in and time out at the top of the list, and that's not a fluke. Uh, you know, the, these guys, they think about this stuff year round and they prepare. So, in the last video, we talked about uh, or, uh, level wind reels, uh, the most common reel on the Great Lakes for salmon fishing, for salmon trolling. We went over a lot of different types of reels and, and how they're used. So, this time, we're going to talk about the rods that you're going you're gonna to use for those applications. Um, we're going to talk, my nose is a little stuffy, I apologize. But we're going to talk about downrigger rods. Um, copper and lead core rods, which pretty much are the same thing, and then dipsy diver rods, both convent, well there's really three different types of dipsy diver rods now, but we'll cover those here in just a sec. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, bundle up, um, yeah, see you in a sec. So let's jump right into this. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. That's one of uh, one of our sayings on our boat is keep it simple, stupid, the old KISS method, and it works. If something's not broke, we don't go and try to fix it. You know, what's your typical downrigger rod? Um, typically eight and a half feet, well eight to eight and a half, maybe nine foot in length. Medium to medium heavy, line rating of 12 to 25, maybe 15 to 30. Um, you want, you, we run all our, all our rods a little bit uh, a little bit on the heavier side, medium to medium heavy. We like that little more backbone. These fish are powerful, and uh, you'll be happy on the day that if you need it, it's there. Uh, we love Akuma. Akuma makes some great rods. Akuma is really, this is gonna sound like an Akuma commercial probably throughout this video, because I'm gonna be showing you some Akuma stuff, but man, I, I really dig what Akuma has done for the Great Lakes uh, fishermen. Um, they've come out with specific um, rods for each, uh, you know, each application of fishing, downrigger, dipsy diver, lead core, uh, copper, and they just made it easy for the fishermen um, to pick out what they need, and they've come out with some really good rods with some really good prices, and I know in the last video I said spend the money, I still stick with that, but Akuma has some really great stuff at some at some pretty good prices, so um, so down or downrigger rods, Akuma, um, Shimano makes some really good rods, and uh, Daiwa makes some really good rods, those are really the pretty the big three around here. So to give you an example on a downrigger rod, this is an Akuma. This is an Akuma Classic GLT downrigger, and it says right on it, downrigger. Uh, this is an eight and a half foot rod, 10 to 20 pound line rating, and it is a medium, so medium strength. What I really like also about these Akuma rods, it's hard to see this, but if you look at this four handle or four grip, you can see it's in a triangle. And I just really like the way when you're fighting a fish, the way that that feels. So kudos to Akuma to have that. A few other companies has gone, have gone to that as well. It's just a nice feature personally, something I really dig. If you haven't tried it, it might be a, something you might want to try out. For the, uh, for the line guides, looks like they got stainless steel inserts. And most companies have gone to either like an aluminum oxide insert or a stainless steel insert just because the lines are getting tougher, you know, braid and copper, um, things like that, they could really cut up those old line guides. So that's what pretty much everybody's going to for the Great Lakes rod. So that's a great example right there of your classic and typical downrigger rod. The Akuma Classic Pro GLT price here, going out the door, 35 bucks, 34.99. And I know they sell oodles of these things here in this shop. All right, let's talk about your, your long lines, your uh, lead core and your copper rods. Uh, those again are going to be typically eight to eight and a half, nine foot in length. 
medium to medium heavy line rating anywhere from 10 to 20 12 25 15 to 30 somewhere in there um, these are also going to have stainless steel guides because that copper obviously is really going to cut through those old guides and you don't ever want cuts on your on your line guides because it's going to fray your back or tear up your mono and everything else so uh, that's your general guidelines on your lead corn and copper rod uh, again i'm going to show you some akuma uh, examples here these these rods uh, we run almost all Akuma rods for our uh, for our long lines. One that I really like. Let me find it. This is one that I really like. Not only because it's just a tough rod, um, handles fish really well, but the price on this thing is fantastic. So this is an Akuma. It's another classic Pro GLT, and again, it says right on the right on the blank that it's a copper lead core. Just takes the guesswork right out of it. Um, this is an eight and a half foot rod, 12 to 27 pound line, uh, line rating and a medium, medium strength. And like I said, it's got those stainless steel eyes and they're much bigger on this rod because Akuma listened to the fishermen out there and listened to what, what we were asking for. And that was in the old type line guides. A lot of those copper knots, lead core knots, they're getting bound up in those, those smaller eyes. So Akuma listened, and they made these eyes, uh, line guides bigger, and they made them stronger. So thumbs up to Akuma for doing that, listening to what we're saying out there. Uh, this rod, I, they, I know they sell dozens upon dozens of these rods out the door here at the shop. It's a $40, $40 rod, $39.99 going out the door. Uh, like I said, we run tons of these. They don't, they don't fail. Another lead core copper rod made by Akuma. This is their White Diamond series. Uh, it's a little higher end, so I'm sure the money is probably in the in the blank itself, or maybe in the spool or the reel seat, maybe in the handle someplace. But again, this has those larger stainless steel eyelets, so the copper and the lead core can move easily through them. This also is eight and a half foot in length, line rating 12 to 25, and it's a medium strength rod. So this is another uh, copper lead core rod made by Akuma. Price on this going out the door for the white diamond, $79.99, so an $80 rod. So it's uh, about double what the last one was. And you're going to find that with all these rods. They're going to have different levels of price, different levels of, of quality. Um, so you're going to see that time and time again. Get what you can, get what you can afford. Um, you know, your, your fishing kind of depends on that rod. You don't want something, I always think of it this way, if I go out, if I got a hundred dollar bill and I can buy three cheap rods and put them in the boat and in two years they're junk, or I can buy one good rod and in, in 10 years it's still going strong, I'm gonna go with those good rods. You know, you, you get what you pay for. All right, so dipsy divers, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Well, not really tricky, but in a sense, uh, maybe a little more confusing because if you don't know what low divers and high divers are, um, maybe it's going to be a little confusing for you, but we're going to have a video out soon on the differences in low divers and high divers and how to run them. Essentially, a low diver, we run four divers on our boat, two low divers and two high divers, two per side. One low diver, one high diver, port side, and then ditto on the, on, the, uh, on the opposite side. Uh, low divers typically run a little deeper and closer to the boat. High divers, like the name says, a little bit higher and further away from the boat. So for our low divers, we run a little shorter rod. High divers, we run a little longer rod so they can get out around those low divers. I know that might be a little tricky if you don't know what I'm talking about, but stay with me. So low divers, what do we typically look for? Um, eight and a half, nine foot rod, at the most nine foot. Typically though, eight to eight and a half. Medium to medium heavy, probably more on the medium heavy side. Um, and just like the other rods, line rating, 15 to 30 probably is a little bit better. Dipsy divers pull really hard, so a little bit, a little bit higher rating. A little bit stiffer, um, it might be a little bit better. High divers, our rods on our boat are 10 footers. Um, so nine to 10 feet on your high divers, and I would stick with the same parameters. 15 to 30 maybe on the line uh, and medium to medium heavy probably more on the medium heavy side 
So Dipsy Diver Rods, what kind of rods are you going to use for these? Well, if you're just going to run conventional rods, you can do that. Um, if you're just running plain monofilament, no, that's no problem. That, that monofilament's not going to tear up your eyelets. The big thing though, if you're not running mono, if you're running wire or braid on, on a conventional rod, you either want to put a swivel tip on the end or you want to go to a twilly tip. This is a twilly tip and it's nothing more than really a big spring that's going to go right on your very top eye. So as that line comes out the top eye, it's going to run through that spring. That spring is going to take the brunt of the force. It's going to take all that, all that cutting power and all that uh, down power you know, off that off that top eye. So that's what we've gone to actually on our boat. We got away from roller rods. We got away from other things. We went. We kept it simple. We kept with our conventional rods, um, and we went to twilly tips for our for our wire divers. And we run wire divers. And we never have a problem with these twilly tips. So if you don't know what a roller rod is, it's a typical fishing rod, but it has roller eye guides. I'll see if I can get you a look there on the camera. You see it's just a roller that the wire just feeds right over. And so as that wire or that braid goes through that eye, it's going to run that roller. If you're going to go roller rods, spend a little bit of extra money, get the good ones. Uh, the one I just showed you, this is Nakuma. <sighs> This is another series from Akuma, and, and again, kudos to Akuma for listening to the fishermen on the Great Lakes. Um, this is a big lake tournament series, so this is designed, I mean, really for Great Lakes fishing. They, they went out and they listened to the fishermen and they came out with these series. So big lake tournament series, this is an eight and a half foot roller rod, 15 to 30 pound line test, and this is a medium heavy. So definitely a bit stronger, a little bit more beefy, and like I said, um, the roller, roller guides. Cost on this is $95.99 going out the door, so almost a hundred bucks. I can guarantee you though, this is a this is a good rod. Akuma also makes that same rod in 10 foot links, so you could go that that style, that model, you know, for your low divers and your high divers. Now Akuma also has kind of a hybrid rod, and this is interesting. This is also a dipsy diver rod. This is another one of the this is another one of their Big Lake Tournament series. This is a hundred dollar rod. Now this has, this is tricky because this is a big one, but this has the big stainless steel eyes on it. So nothing's gonna get caught up in there. Everything's gonna run smooth, but on the end, it has a swivel tip. So just you know, in the same sense of that twilly tip, they got a swivel tip on there for that line to go through. So it's not tearing up the end of your, the end of your rod. So those are your, I mean, your basic three options for dipsy divers. You know, there's other ways to skin a cat, I, I get that as well, but those, those are the ways that, uh, that we tend to stick with. Conventional, roller rod, or that hybrid series. So it's your choice. Do a little research. If you got any questions that I can help you out with, hey, shoot me an email, chrisstangletackle at gmail.com. I'm happy to answer any questions, give you a pricing on rods here in the shop, so maybe it gives you an idea, you know, maybe what to look for as far as pricing as well. And as always, if you liked what you saw here, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. We're going to have some other videos coming out soon. Thanks for tuning in. I know this was kind of brief and real basic, but sometimes, hey, that's the best way to do things. All right, so everybody stay warm. Take care.